Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of our What Would Leo Fender Do project. And uh, before we go any further, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Does anyone have a princess that they need to save from a giant gorilla? Because I'm your man. <laughs> I just watched Brad Angove's video on um, what to do for videos and so I hope I have enough light. And uh, I know I'm supposed to be in the center of the thing but I'm off to the side. Um, because I'm sharing the stage with my beloved pin router. And he didn't say anything about silly mustaches, so I think I'm okay. So, um, Brad, I hope you're doing good, brother man. So anyway, um, in the last episode, which was also the first episode, we talked about the guitar that, um, that I have right here, which started out life as the What Would Leo Fender Do guitar. And as I was... Um, as, as I started making it, I'm like, well, this isn't anything like what I think Leo Fender would do. And slapping a bunch of Telecaster hardware on this wouldn't make it any more Fender-y than, um, well, than, than anything else. And it got me to thinking, um, you know, Leo Fender, one of the things that he did when he was at Fender, anyway, was every guitar got its own hardware. And we used to say, isn't it weird that they didn't use the, um, the the strat like football jack thing on other guitars well the fact of the matter is it was a very rare instance that they used that they recycled hardware like that so like the telecaster has its own bridge and the strat has its own bridge and um uh the you know the jazz master has its own well i guess the jazz master shares a bridge with a jag but you get the point i'm trying to make is that it seemed like tuners and neck plates were the only things that were standard on guitars from uh, the time that Leo Fender started Fender uh, to where he left. Now, in this day and age, it's not unheard of to see like stuff with, you know, one set of hardware on a, on a different guitar, and, and that's a cool thing. But that was something that Leo Fender never did. So I thought about it, and I'm like, well, first of all, we don't, we're not going to use the the plate because this is so, that's wrong, I and mean, this, is, this is just silly. Why don't we just make a cool guitar that maybe Leo Fender would go, hey, that's pretty neat. Um, so that's as close as I think we're gonna get to what Leo Fender would do. I mean, we used ash and, and maple, so he might have used those. Um, anyway, um, so Chris and I have some plans for this guitar, and uh, in this video I'm gonna show you some of the uh, the old school tools that I think Leo Fender would have found very cool. And uh, one of them, of course, is my beloved pin router. And I'm gonna show you guys how we rough shape a neck that has an angled headstock with a jig that we, um, that we have for the pin router. Um, a couple of things. Because this is uh, our Challenger shape, I elected to bind it with black binding because that's gonna work very, very, man, that mustache is dopey looking. Um, I elected to bind it with black binding because I think that's going to look really neat on this guitar once you see what we're going to do with the paintwork. And that's another thing we're going to do in this video is we're going to get started on paint and um, I'm hoping that I can show you guys a lot of that process. Uh, the other thing is everybody said, hey man, those, uh, those TV Jones pickups are the shit. You should use those. So who am I to say no? Plus we have them thanks to our friend BK and um, they're really, really cool. And if you said use those TV Jones, I'm sorry, those TV Jones pickups, you were right. They look, they look the coolest. We're gonna go with our standard Challenger bridge um, because even though it wouldn't necessarily match the design ethos that Leo Fender had, I think he would have thought it was pretty cool. So anyway, um, in the in the first part of this video, I'm going to I'm going to pull the neck out of the body here. Okay, and we're gonna set that aside because later we're going to do some, some finish stuff on that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're gonna cut a bunch of this material off, make the headstock the right thickness, and then we're gonna cut a bunch of, wor of um, uh, wood off the bottom of the, uh, the neck thing, blank, and uh, get that pretty close, and then we're gonna round it over using this jig that I'm very excited to show you guys. It's a tool that we don't use very often anymore, so it's gonna be a neat one to, to, to do. Um, uh, a couple of things, I, um, I went ahead and radius the fretboard. You guys have seen me do that a hundred million times, so no big deal. And um, I bound the neck, again, like I said, with black binding, and you guys have seen me do that too. So um, lots and lots and lots of videos on, on how to bind stuff. 
If you have any questions, you know where to leave them. All right, so let's get to work. All right, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to remove material from the uh, headstock area. And we want that to be about 5 eighths of an inch. We're gonna cut it to about 5 eighths. And I bet you that's pretty close. Man, look at that, it's just about spot on. Um, we're gonna cut all of this meat off here. And then we're going to, um, we're gonna the final thickness of that's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be less than 5 eighths, which is gonna work because it's harder to put wood back on. Then, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna, we're probably gonna cut this guy to about an inch, which should be more than thick enough for our, um, our neck. And then we're gonna blend in the volute area, which will look a little like that. And the first thing we're gonna do is use our bandsaw. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. I keep this set of uh, older vernier calipers around right by my old man machine so that I can get it exactly, my headstock's exactly the right thickness. And I, see, I even put this little mark here. And when those two lines get lined up, the headstock is the perfect thickness. And I keep it over here, like right on the old man machine. Chris doesn't even know about these because if I tell him, he'll take them and he'll, he'll hide them from me. So I also got the, uh, my volute is started on the, uh, the headstock and I want the, the volute to be in line with the, uh, the nut eventually. And now we're going to work on the profile of the neck. Okay guys, um, now I'm gonna show you a really cool tool that I haven't had in videos very much. And it is this sled that um, I actually stole the idea from Ryan. And I don't know Ryan's last name, but he's got a video where he's listening to Primus and he's buzzing a bunch of necks off on a sled, not unlike this. And so um, I decided to make one for my pin router too. And uh, let me give you a kind of a heads up on how it works. You, um, you simply put the neck in the, uh, the jig and uh, bolt the headstock down because there's a bunch of holes in the headstock and we don't need to worry too much about um, we don't need to worry about getting here because our, our gigantic bit, this 7 8 roundover bit, is going to only go from here to here on both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this guy through and we're going to remove a bunch of material from the, uh, from the neck in one easy pass. And it's got handles on it and the neck is held in place by a bunch of bolts so hopefully it's not going to go flying. It's been a while since I've used this tool. Um, and I just am kind of looking forward to using it again. Uh, oh, you know, we could just run over to the deadhead sander and start sanding it, but this seems more fun. So let's go ahead and get the tool depth correct. And um, we'll start flinging, flinging maple powder everywhere. Okay, so our bearing's going to come in and hit this piece of wood here. And then we're going to, actually it's gonna hit this piece of wood first, and we're gonna glide all along the neck and out this piece here, and then we're gonna flip it around and do the same on the other side. All right, we've made a couple changes, because remember how I said it's been a while since I used this tool? It's been, it's been ever since we moved into this shop, I have not actually used this jig, so I had to kind of re regroup here. So with the 7 8 roundover, uh, we weren't able to put the, the amount of roundover that we needed, and we could modify the jig, but I think we decided that we really like using the, the, the uh, bearing bits. So I've replaced the bit with a 5 8 which is what I use for 
you know, other like flat fender necks in the router table. I've also put some tape on my binding in case the bearing starts spinning. I don't melt the binding. So, all right, let's see if we get a result that is better this time. This jig works great and holds everything nice and steady. So, I mean, it's, it's not quite as terrifying as some of the other tools where you're pushing it through by hand. These handles make a big, big difference. If any of you guys decide to come to our build a, um, a set neck guitar, you might even get to use this jig, which is wildly, wildly cool. Um, all right, so now we've got, you know, kind of the, uh, the, the, the profile is started on the neck. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this raised section here and start to work in our volute. I kind of want it to come in, you know, something, something like this. And we'll work on our, our heel, something a little like this. And that's easier to do than it is to draw on the deadhead sander. Our neck looks pretty good. I did a little bit of hand sanding and um, yeah, it feels just about right. Um, but I didn't want to show you guys me like hand sanding the neck. I can't imagine that anybody wants to watch me do this on something long and hard. <laughs> All right, so um, well, we're gonna put this aside for just a second. In fact, we're gonna put it right over here, right over here where it's really precarious. And we're gonna shift our attention to the body. Um, it's sanded to 150, which is more than enough for what we're going to do in the next step, which is we're going to shoot black dye on this. And um, let's go do that now. You guys want to? All right. So like I said, we're just going to spray dye mixed with water, some water. It's hot water though. Um, and this is uh, trans tint dye. I get this from my buddy Jeff over at trans tint. Check him out and tell him Matt at Texas Toast sent you. This is black. And um, Chris is filming. He might be able to describe what, what we're doing and why um, because he's got some good ideas for the finish for this guitar. And like I said, the first step is paint it black um, or dye it black. And what do you think, Chris? Is that enough or we need a little more? I think that's good. More blick, okay. All right, now I'm not going to drink it now. Okay, I've got this in my high pressure, high volume gun, and it moves a lot of material, especially when it's the same viscosity as water. So, um, and I really, I actually was using this the other day and I thought, that's actually pretty good for this. And I thought Chris would want to see it. So, let's do it. You kind of want to stand back a little bit. You sure that's dark enough, dude? Okay, as you can see, the Ash Challenger body that we've been working on has now been uh, blackened with um, the trans tint black dye and water. Everything's looking pretty dry now. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to seal this up with Simtech Easy Sanding Sealer and then it's going to get really, really cool. So I'm going to continue to call this the What Would Leo Fender Do guitar, even though we're way off the reservation of what Leo Fender would have done, um, I think. And uh, you guys seem to be uh, in agreement with me there. But it's still going to be a neat guitar. And I think that Leo Fender and myself and all you guys will really enjoy it once it's put together and you'll go, oh man, I want one of those guitars. Maybe. Um, so let's see. If you guys have any questions about what we did in this video, please leave them in the comment section below. If you want to just tell me how sexy my new mustache is, leave that in the comment section below too. 
Um, if you want to tell me that I look like I belong in the village people, okay, you can tell me that too. I don't care. If you uh, like the video, give me the thumbs up, yada, yada, yada. If you appreciate content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys neat stuff like this. If you want Texas Toast swag, links in the description below um, uh, to our Teespring page. There's lots of good stuff over there. Uh, some designs that we had done, some designs that you guys made for us that are super cool. Lots and lots and lots of cool stuff over at Teespring. Um, so, until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast Guitars reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, y'all.